Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Samar Mohanty. Thank you, Mark and the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present here. I'm here to introduce nanoscope therapeutics, pioneering innovations and development in gene agnostic optogenetic therapy, which is, uh, has potential to become disease agnostic for outer retinal degeneration diseases, which is impacting millions of patients who do not have vision and no cure so far. As we have normal photoreceptors, rods and cones, we enjoy beautiful vision and the picture you see in the middle with normal retina, but this disease like macular dystrophy, whether it's Stargard or in dry MD or geographic atrophy, there is significant loss of vision. Same way uh, in, in RP, there is a loss of photoreceptor which cause significant panretinal dystrophy. So, not only the disease, uh, the underlying gene mutations are hundreds of mutations are responsible for individual diseases, but also the pathophysiology is very complicated. So there are, we are all fortunate to have Loxton now, which introduced gene therapy to ocular space and which could repair certain single mutations, but having hundreds of gene mutations to be repaired required development of hundreds of different products to address the whole a patient population. Similarly, the individual disease has complex pathophysiology, as you can see, which will uh, require uh, uh, the introduction of many different trophic factors or complement inhibition systems, which are good for delaying the disease progression, but none of them can stop it from progressing. And also, there are significant patient population who do not have photoreceptor, who have lost their vision until we developed a therapy which is approved and being used in the patient. So because of that, we are targeting the bipolar cells which are still preserved and making them the new photoreceptors. So it's not differentiating those cells, but basically repro reprogramming those cells or refunctionalizing them with an option where in natural light environment, they can sense vision and restore to certain level. So how it works with a natural environment, if you see here with a vision in a classical system, you require RP cells, photoreceptors, and complex machinery to produce the visual transduction. Here, it's a, if you see the, the light scene, which is projected to the eye, goes to the, can you go back? So back. So here you can see that the, the light, the scenery is projected into bipolar cells, which are now photosensitive. The bipolar cells are expressing m theory as you can see here, and that is a reporter for MCO gene. So once they express the visual scene, which is a moving object or a static object is getting projected onto those cells and stimulate those cells. So here I want to show the unique uh, mechanism of action of our opsin, where you will see that it's not only a transmembrane ion channel that you are seeing here, we also have a ligand which expand the spectral sensitivity of this complex. So being excited by other wavelengths of light. On top of that, we have an enhancer which enhances the cation influx to the cells. So it's basically implanting molecular solar panel to the bipolar cells. So now since I have shown you the structure, let me show you the unique properties or function that Nanoscope provides. The MCO has very fast kinetics, both on and off response are very fast. And then also, as I showed you, it has a broad spectral sensitivity so that the patients which are treated can see in different light conditions. And then most importantly, it is very sensitive to ambient light. At ambient light level, it can generate significant current so that we can target sing, sim, small bipolar cells that are abundant and also preserve significant visual processing circuitry. So here is, uh, as I told you, initially we were working on retinitis pigmentosa, different model, RD1, RD10, and other models. You see before in the baseline, this mice slowly progresses and lost vision. They're trained to find the platform associated with light. 
but uh, after 12 to 16 weeks, they lose vision and no longer can find the dry platform, uh, which is a reward for them. But after injection, the mice, which you can see being put in different arms, can find the platform in, without making any errors. So there is a dose response. You can see here the latency to find platform increases with increasing dose. And not only for RP, we have now demonstrated in StarGuard mice model, as well as ABCA4 with mutation, RP65 mutation, LCA mice model, also this works. Most importantly, if you will see the light intensity that requires to restore this kind of vision is in few locks, as similar to in the room that we are sitting here. So we have published some papers on this and some are in print. Uh, so we have done significant other behavioral and electrophysiological measurements which shows that we can restore vision to a significant clinically meaningful level. So now uh, we presented some of this data last year at AO, but without taking much of our presentation which is coming up in ASRS. So I wanted to show you, we are not only able to improve the visually guided mobility, which is very important, but also visual equity. So these patients in a phase one, two study had a logmar vision of two, which is 20 by around 2000. And some of the subject we could improve up to 20 by 200. So they were LP and NLP patients. And there is also a dose response. You can see there are three subjects in low dose group, and there are eight subjects in the high dose group. And out of eight subjects, uh, you can see six subjects improved more than 30 letter if you convert 0.6 log mark. And seven out of eight improved more than 15 letter gain. So they also made less error. There are multiple mobility assays were done with obstacle, without obstacle, and the subject can uh, perform uh, much better like you saw in the mice rodent uh, videos. But so they could make less errors and the time taken to find lighted platform was much less. They also improved in different measures, recognizing different shapes, the direction of optical flow, and also the size of objects, the minimum size that they can detect, the minimum light intensity that they can detect, as well as the higher speed of moving objects that they can detect. So those threshold enhanced. And that correlated very, very well to the patient reported outcome measures. And here is a video that's showing the behavioral improvement. The subject after eight weeks of treatment could come to the treatment site without taking any help from the chaperone, from his family members. So that was really amazing to see. And there were no serious adverse event, very mild IOP elevation and intraocular inflammation treated with topical steroid. So our current status is we have started the RESTORE program, which has been initiated in seven clinical sites. First patient enrolled in July. Almost we have uh, recruited uh, most of the subjects, and the recruitment is going to close. The safety profile remains very positive uh, after this DSMB meeting, and we have received multiple orphan drug designation. With that, I want to show you that not only with a viral delivery method, we have developed a unique non-viral laser delivery method where with geographic atrophy areas, when we deliver the opsin with a laser, then you can see not only the blue, blue and green light response is enhanced, but also we could give red light vision to the subjects which do not have that vision, natural vision. So this is our pipeline. With that, I want to Oh, thank you all, and Nanoscope team is focused and advancing all unmet retinal degenerative disease uh, therapies using our optogenetic platform and delivery technique. With that, thank you. Thank you.